Israeli-based company called Amdocs that generates the computerized records and billing data for nearly every phone call made in America. As Carl Cameron reported, U.S. investigators digging into the 9-11 terrorist attacks fear that suspects may have been tipped off to what they were doing by information leaking out of Amdocs. In tonight's report, we learned that the concern about phone security extends to another company founded in Israel that provides the technology that the U.S. government uses for electronic eavesdropping. Here is Carl Cameron's third report. The company is Comverse Infosys, a subsidiary of an Israeli-run private telecommunications firm with offices throughout the U.S. It provides wiretapping equipment for law enforcement. Here's how wiretapping works in the U.S. Every time you make a call, it passes through the nation's elaborate network of switchers and routers run by the phone companies. Custom computers and software made by companies like Comverse are tied into that network to intercept, record, and store the wiretapped calls and at the same time transmit them to investigators. The manufacturers have continuing access to the computers so they can service them and keep them free of glitches. This process was authorized by the 1994 Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act, or CALEA. Senior government officials have now told Fox News that while CALEA made wiretapping easier, it has led to a system that is seriously vulnerable to compromise and may have undermined the whole wiretapping system. Indeed, Fox News has learned that Attorney General John Ashcroft and FBI Director Robert Mueller were both warned October 18th in a hand-delivered letter from 15 local, state, and federal law enforcement officials who complained that, quote, Law enforcement's current electronic surveillance capabilities are less effective today than they were at the time CALEA was enacted. Converse insists the equipment it installs is secure, but the complaint about this system is that the wiretap computer programs made by Converse have in effect a back door through which wiretaps themselves can be intercepted by unauthorized parties. Adding to the suspicions is the fact that in Israel, Converse works closely with the Israeli government and under special programs gets reimbursed for up to 50% of its research and development costs by the Israeli Ministry of Industry and Trade. But investigators within the DEA, INS, and FBI have all told Fox News that to pursue or even suggest Israeli spying through Converse is considered career suicide. And sources say that while various FBI inquiries into Converse have been conducted over the years, they've been halted before the actual equipment has ever been thoroughly tested for leaks. A 1999 FCC document indicates several government agencies expressed deep concerns that too many unauthorized, non-law enforcement personnel can access the wiretap system. And the FBI's own nondescript office in Chantilly, Virginia, that actually oversees the Kalia wiretapping program, is among the most agitated about the threat. But there is a bitter turf war internally at FBI. It is the FBI's office in Quantico, Virginia, that has jurisdiction over awarding contracts and buying intercept equipment. And for years, they've thrown much of the business to Converse. A handful of former U.S. law enforcement officials involved in awarding Converse government contracts over the years now work for the company. Numerous sources say some of those individuals were asked to leave government service under what knowledgeable sources call troublesome circumstances that remain under administrative review within the Justice Department. And what troubles investigators most, particularly in New York, in the counterterrorism investigation of the World, Ter World Trade Center attack, is that on a number of cases, suspects that they had sought to wiretap and surveil immediately changed their telecommunications processes. They started acting much differently as soon as those supposedly secret wiretaps went into place. Brett? Carl, is there any reason to suspect in this instance that the Israeli government is involved? No, there's not, but there are growing instincts and an awful lot of law enforcement officials in a variety of agencies who suspect that and have begun compiling evidence and a highly classified investigation into precisely that possibility. Brett? All right, Carl. Thanks very much. Los Angeles, 1997. A major local, state, and federal drug investigation sours. The suspects? Israeli organized crime with operations in New York, Miami, Las Vegas, Canada, Israel and Egypt. The allegations? Cocaine and ecstasy trafficking and sophisticated white-collar credit card and computer fraud. The problem? According to classified law enforcement documents obtained by Fox News, the bad guys had the cops beepers, cell phones, even home phones under surveillance. Some who did get caught admitted to having hundreds of numbers and using them to avoid arrest. Quote, this compromised law enforcement communications between LAPD detectives and other assigned law enforcement officers working various aspects of the case. 
The organization discovered communications between organized crime intelligence division detectives, the FBI, and the Secret Service. Shock spread from the DEA to the FBI in Washington and then the CIA. An investigation of the problem, according to law enforcement documents, concluded, quote, the organization has apparent extensive access to database systems to identify pertinent personal and biographical information. When investigators tried to find out where the information might have come from, they looked at Amdocs, a publicly traded firm based in Israel. Amdocs generates billing data for virtually every call in America, and they do credit checks. The company denies any leaks, but investigators still fear that the firm's data is getting into the wrong hands. When investigators checked their own wiretapping system for leaks, they grew concerned about potential vulnerabilities in the computers that intercept, record, and store the wiretapped calls. A main contractor is Converse Infosys, which works closely with the Israeli government and under a special grant program is reimbursed for up to 50% of its research and development costs by Israel's Ministry of Industry and Trade. Asked this week about another sprawling investigation and the detention of 60 Israelis since September 11th, the Bush administration treated the questions like hot potatoes. I would just refer you to Department of Justice with it. I'm not familiar with the report. I'm aware that uh, some Israeli citizens have been detained. With respect to why they are being retain detained and the other aspects of, of your question, whether it's because they are in intelligence services or what they were doing, I will uh, defer to the Department of Justice and the FBI to answer that. Beyond the 60 apprehended or detained and many deported since September 11th, another group of 140 Israeli individuals have been arrested and detained in this year in what government documents describe as, quote, an organized intelligence gathering operation designed to, quote, penetrate government facilities. Most of those individuals said they had served in the Israeli military, which is compulsory there, but they also had, most of them, intelligence expertise and either worked for Amdocs or other companies in Israel that specialize in wiretapping. Earlier this week, the Israeli embassy here in Washington denied any spying against or in.